sound like we're on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> That's next year. Uh, uh, so once again, for those of you who weren't here 15 minutes ago, my name's Brian Rich, uh, and we're doing Do Good Dialogues, which is really just a series of conversations with um, you know, people from varying perspectives and with varying uh, expertise and uh, you know, sort of ability to bring something to the social good conversation. Um, so we have Carrie Sartowski, who is many things, but among them, we're going to call her an expert in the millennial generation. Um, uh, she's an author, formerly of the Case Foundation, uh, currently out on her own, and depending on the utility of calling herself one or not, uh, she could or could not be a millennial. That, that's exactly uh, right. That's exactly, I, I consider myself a cusper, right on the cusp between Gen X and Gen Y, but if it's good for business, then I'm a millennial. Right. Whereas, and if it's not, then... <laughs> whereas I, under no one's definition, qualify as a millennial by a series of months. So <laughs> Just missed it. We'll so adopt you. <laughs> If it's good for business. Exactly, exactly. So, like, this is the most over-scrutinized generation cohort of people. It is the largest and arguably most influential or seemingly will be most influential if they are not yet uh, generation or cohort. Um, what is it that we get wrong when we talk about and think about millennials as this monolithic group of, uh, you know, of young people? whatever, and, and why is it that that way of describing them is wrong? Right. So first of all, it's, it's the first group that has been scrutinized in the last 15 to 20 years, I think. <laughs> um, because really, we're having this conversation every 15 to 20 years about the then rising generation, uh, whether it's Gen X, uh, prior to that, the baby boomers. Um, you know, I'm sure that even the greatest generation was under some level of scrutiny at times. Um, but in terms of what we're getting wrong, I really think that this is a generation that, um, first of all, it's the largest and most diverse generation in our nation's history. There are 80 million millennials, and too often, what we're finding is that we're trying to box them in uh, into one category and place labels like entitled and narcissistic and uh, all of these things. And um, you know, when in fact, I, I think that um, they are bringing um, something very unique uh, to a lot of conversations uh, happening uh, politically, technologically, um, here at South by Southwest. And that's because, um, you know, they, they've, well, first of all, they, um, you know, they, they bring a diversity of perspectives. They bring a passion for, for entrepreneurship and social entrepreneurship. Um, but I think too often, you know, we're just, we're just kind of saying, okay, here, here's, you know, here are the outliers, here are the folks that um, are doing really tremendous things and we're ignoring all of the people in the middle um, that may not be the leaders of the millennial generation but are also doing some really interesting things. I, I would also argue, Britt, that within this group, because it spans such a large age sure. group, there are you know, individuals that are in significantly different stages of their life. I mean, we have millennials, within this you know, definition we have those who are still in or just recently graduating college, all the way up to uh, you 